Hi, my name's Andy from Lupine Adventure Co-op and I'm making this short video to show you how to use EDV mapping to plot a route for your expedition without access to a paper map. So the video is in five parts. Part one is logging into EDV and finding the mapping software. Part two is plotting your route. Part three is then splitting your route into legs. Part four is filling in the route card. And finally, part five is exporting your root card and route as a GPX file so you can then share it with other people. So the first thing to do is to log on to your E D of E. You'll notice that under my silver D of E, because this is a silver participant, there's a menu item expedition and then mapping. Then on the right here, you get the option to create a new map. So you put in a new map name and map description. Now, my EDV is a little bit different because I'm not a participant. So I'll put in Silver Day 2 Practice as the map name and just copy that into the new map description. Then create a new map. So once EDV mapping has loaded, the first thing you want to do is to zoom into 1 to 25,000, as that's the scale of map we'll be using. Use the slider, not the plus, as that sometimes hangs EDV. Now, we need to get the grid reference of the start point and end point for each day and any via points you're going to use. Those six figure or 10 figure grid references need to include the two letter prefix. So we'll copy this and search for that location. So it's dropped a pin here. We'll just remove the pin, make sure the plot is loaded and click where the pin was. It drops a little green circle there. We'll then go to the end point campsite, search for that. And again, we'll move the pin and click where it was. We've got a nice straight line between the two points. And as you can see down here, it's 9.8 kilometers. It goes uphill steadily and then down steeply. And lastly, we'll copy the via point in and search for that. So the via point is this trig point. So we'll remove the dropped pin We'll hover over the green line and the little arrow should turn into a little hand with a pointing finger. Click on the line, move away, move back, you get the four arrows, then pick it up and drag and drop to the trig point. So we can see now that the length of the route has gone up to 9.9 .9 kilometers by adding that little via point. So next we want to add lots and lots of waypoints to make the line follow the route that we're actually going to take. So every time I click on the line, a new waypoint will appear. So if I click here, we'll get waypoint three appearing. So now I'll drag the new waypoint to where I want it. Now, if you make a mistake, either because you missed the line, so now this route is going all the way up to the campsite and all the way back. So it's now 19 kilometers. You just click undo. So any little mistakes, just click undo. So you can see there's a little bit of a problem here in that the green line is making it impossible to see the detail on the map. So if we were to print these maps out, we wouldn't actually be able to use them. So we need to change the style of the line. So you click style. I usually go for a red line because there aren't any other red lines on the map other than major roads, of which they don't tend to be where we walk. Take the thickness down and I put the transparency up to the second chunk. So now I'm just going to plot the rest of the route by adding waypoints and whenever I make a mistake I'll just click undo. Okay so we're now up to 14 kilometers which is a little bit short for a silver day so we might need to add a little bit maybe a dog leg up here on the moor but we'll see what it looks like after we put in all the breaks. So the next thing we need to do is to split this into legs. You want about four or five, maybe six tops legs per day. Each leg will be a different row on the route card. So you want the ends of your legs to be points where you're either gonna know exactly where you are or maybe where you've got to make a decision. So if this is the start point, the end of the first leg is gonna be on this road. So we'll definitely know where we are there. Seems like it's called Bingley Road, so we need to find out which waypoint this is. So 
I guess at seven, maybe waypoint eight. So I'll scroll up to waypoint seven. Waypoint seven is the one before. So we'll click on the arrow next to waypoint eight. We'll get the little blue circle where we are and click edit to edit that waypoint. So we're gonna give it a name, Bingley Road. And I'm just gonna put the number one in here. You have to put something and the waypoint changes into a diamond to say it is now a checkpoint rather than just a waypoint. So this second leg is over open moorland, so the leg can be a little bit longer because there's not going to be a lot happening navigationally. So we need to add a waypoint here to move it onto the 12 Apostles stone circle because again we're going to know exactly where we are when we're there. So let's think waypoint 12, 14 something. 14 is that one, so 15, 16. Waypoint 16 is going to be the stone circle. And then I'll just put a number two in there. So I'll just add a few more waypoints. One here at the masts. Okay, I've split my route into a number of legs. So what I need to do now is look at the route card. If you click on the words route card here, it toggles between the route card and the map. So you need to fill in all these fields, aim of expedition, names of team members, etc, etc. We should probably change the setting out time, something a bit more reasonable, 10 o'clock. And set the date. So a silver day has to be seven hours long and we're at five and a half hours here, which isn't too bad. So we're gonna have at least an outbreak, so that's six and a half. So let's put the breaks in. Looking at the route card, the first thing we can do is put campsite as the description of the first point. Now the first row, we leave this completely clear because we're walking to Bingley Road. Now this first leg is two kilometers and in two kilometres, we're probably not going to have a rest. So we'll move on to the next leg. By the time we get to the stone circle, that's a five kilometres total. So we're going to have a bit of a break. So let's put in 20 minutes rest there. And it is walking uphill. By the time we get to the mast, it's another three kilometres. And it's past one now, so we're going to want to have a bit of a break to eat something. So a longer break, we'll put in 40 minutes. So that puts the entire time up to six hours 21. Now these two legs at the end is what, five, six kilometers. So it's downhill on the first bit. Um, the second one's a bit longer, so we'll put 30 minutes in there. So we're just nine minutes short now, about seven hours. So we could put another nine minutes of break in, or we could come back to the map and see where we could add a little bit of extra distance. So we could go up this footpath here and then across the top there to the stone circle. That will probably add nine minutes, maybe, maybe 10, 15. So back to the route card. What we need to do now is to change these descriptions from the numbers that we put in to a description of the leg. We need to put information from the map. So we'll come back to the map and we'll find that first waypoint of Bingley Road and we'll click edit again. And this time we'll change the description. So in the description, we want to write what we're going to do to navigate this leg. Now, it could be very detailed, like a story, or it could just be listing the key points, like there's a overhead pylon system here that we go under. We'll know where we are there. There's a farm here, Far Weather Grange. We probably have a sign on the gate. There's a reservoir here, although it looks like it might be raised up, so we might not see the water. There's key points that you could just list or you could put in a lot more detail. But I'm just gonna put quite a bit of detail in here. Okay, so I've put in my leg description. We'll look at the route card and the detail will now be in the leg description. When you print this off, it looks nice and neat. You need to do that for all the subsequent legs and the last leg. Oh, I'll just put campsite in here as well. Then we need to save it. 
go back to the map and you need to now export all of that and you export as GPX. Click save file and you can send this to your instructor or your teammates and they can open it by clicking import GPX. The supervisor can then check the route and make sure everything's fine.